Hello and welcome back to Ducoscopy TV. Swiss Respect is an association which has been at the centre of much recent debate. Lagerfee journalist Nicolette de Jonquer has more. Swiss Respect has engaged in defending Swiss interests. It wants fair treatment and reciprocity in international agreements to protect the Swiss legal system and Swiss citizens. We have here with us today Antoine Spielmann, co-founder of Swiss Respect, together with Douglas Horning, his lawyer. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> Hi, Nicolette. Antoine, what are the objectives of Swiss Respect and what are the big issues outstanding at the moment? I mean, Swiss Respect has really been set, put together in order to make the public aware of the general public of what the situation or how serious the situation is today in Switzerland. As you know, finance is a, is a major uh, uh, um, uh, economical uh, issue in, in Switzerland and fin weakening finance in Switzerland means weakening jobs and everything that goes with it. We have we have to explain to the public, to the politicians, the issues that are at stake. Tax, banking secrecy, money laundering, everything is being put in the same, in the same bag. And it's a complicated topic and it has to be explained in details by people that understand the matter. We want to stop our ministers to give away absolutely everything on every pressure that is being get, uh, done by a country. And also what is very important is that when they negotiate something, they do negotiate with requesting reciprocity because if you want to give away banking secrecy, you have to ask that some other countries also do, say, uh, do as such. So Swiss respect is really there at the end to, to inform the public in order for our po politicians to take the right decisions. Uh, Douglas, over 10,000 employees' names have been communicated to the IRS, the US tax authorities, by banks. You have seen, you have a copy of the authorization granted by the Conseil Fédéral to allow this communication. Can you comment on this? Yeah, first of all, it's not to the IRS, but to the Department of Justice. I'm sorry. As you know, but uh, the difference is important because, as you know, uh, the Department of Justice uh, launch or seek to launch a possible criminal uh, investigation and criminal procedure against the Swiss banks, 11 of them. And of course, if they do so, or if they do indict one of them, uh, the consequences might be extremely important. So what happened, the Americans are very uh, angry against uh, these particular banks, and in particular Credit Suisse, Gerius Bear, and HSBC, plus uh, the two cantonal banks of Zurich and Basel, mainly because they discovered that uh, after the problem of UBS, or during the UBS problem, these banks supposedly, according to the American accusation, uh, welcomed some US clients who left uh, UBS. So for the Americans, it's uh, something quite important and quite uh, serious. So the Swiss banks, they know that what they did was not correct from a US point of view. So they know that the basis of a possible criminal investigation uh, against them is quite serious and could be very concrete. So what they have to do is to cooperate with the accusation so that they could find some kind of a specific agreement so they could keep going with their business and pay a huge fine in doing so. Uh, if they do cooperate very well, they could save a good amount in the fine. If UBS had to pay 780 million, uh, they would have to pay more than a billion, very likely. Let's say a billion two. So if you cooperate very well, you can maybe save 200 million. In the worst case scenario, from a Swiss point of view, the criminal sentence for a bank would be 5 million. So on one side, if you're the bank, you save 250 million. On the other side, you make a provision of 5 million. So you don't care about Swiss law. What I cannot understand is that the Swiss government agrees with that. It's really two different kind of matters. The Swiss government as any government, the first duty of it is to protect, is to protect its own citizen or the, its own people living in the country. 
And when the government had to choose in April, and that's the question that you ask, for the authorization, either to authorize the bank to disclose thousands and thousands of documents and thousands, thousands of names of uh, employees, or to protect them, the government chose to help the bank. Now, Swiss Respect has opened a lawsuit against HSBC. What is the objective of this uh, complaint and what do you expect and when are you going to get results? It's a civil claim. Uh, we noticed, or Swiss Respect noticed, that many employees, although they're very mad against uh, their employer, former employer and the government, cannot really say it openly. Uh, because they are afraid to lose their job, they are afraid to be recognized, uh, there is a lot of possible pressure. So the role of Swiss Respect is to concentrate uh, these elements and on behalf of Swiss Respect as such to go to the court, civil court, and request the court to state in a judgment, a civil judgment, that the communication of these data were done uh, in violation of the law, were not licit, and that consequently no further communication should be done. Now, Antoine, some banks have refused to communicate, and apparently they have had no consequences. Yes, I mean, obviously, there are banks that are uh, able to um, stand in, uh, against American uh, power. Uh, mainly these were foreign banks with uh, less probably exposure in the US. Um, I think what is important to understand in this legal procedure is that what Swiss Respect wants to pass for a message really, beside helping obviously these, these employees, uh, is that there is a, a war out there or a political war also at the level of big corporations, politicians, and the people in Switzerland or, or the people generally. In this case, it's a war of banks that are giving away names of employees, but also in the case of Rubik, are going to give away names of, of clients that has been faithful for the bank for the past 50 years. And in order to save an institution, so you give away people, in order to save a bank. And it's the interest really of large institutions against the clients. And, and, and really, you know, this is, it's very important not to let these things, just to accept these things in the interest of, of large organizations that have done major mistakes. I mean, how can UBS be, want to become the largest bank in the US and at the same time have undeclared accounts as Americans? I mean, you know, it's, they should pay for it. I think UBS should have been nationalized. It should not have been saved. That's my point of view. And, and that's really where when you put and you cannot put 70 billion on the table like the government has done to save an institution that has such major mistakes and then give away employees and give away your clients i mean something is wrong there now you seem to have some allies on the other side of the atlantic uh, senator Rand paul is a, a junior senator for kentucky has uh, opposed the actually has blocked the signature of the uh, double tax imposition, double tax uh, treaty, sorry, between the US and Switzerland on the grounds that that treaty endangered constitutional rights of US citizens, including banking records. It is, I think it is common sense to act like that. I mean, as I said in, in the beginning, we are fighting out there an economical war. And whenever you take a decision of attacking, you might have, you know, uh, reaction, uh, counter reactions. And, and in this case, it's clear. Just one more thing uh, with the FATCA, you know, yes. the Foreign Account Tax Compliance Act, uh, that the Americans, of course, are willing to uh, to implement everywhere in the world. Uh, you know that uh, some countries in some of the major countries like France, uh, Great Britain, Spain, etc., said, sure, no problem, uh, we would uh, implement that FATCA in our country, but on the basis of reciprocity. So you do the same, you give us all the information, uh, the tax information regarding our Spanish uh, people uh, in the US, etc. And that's exactly
exactly uh, the sense of uh, the fight of uh, Swiss respect, you need reciprocity. And when uh, suddenly this, uh, some of the uh, high officials in the US and politics, politicians uh, realize that you now have uh, a strong uh, opposition to this reciprocity. Well, Douglas, Antoine, thank you very much for coming today. For more collaborative interviews like this one, stay tuned to Duke Scopy TV.